ladies and gentlemen, gather round. Let me, let me tell you a tale of hybrid innovation from back in the day. Now, we all know about the Toyota Prius, right? It's been the face of hybrid cars for decades. But did you know the first hybrid actually predated the Prius by a good 20 years? And no, it wasn't made by Tesla or some Silicon Valley genius. It was made by Briggs & Stratton. Yes, the same company that makes lawnmower engines. I know, sounds like a punchline already, right? Imagine this, 1979, the tail end of the oil crisis, and car makers were scrambling to find alternatives to high fuel consumption. So what does Briggs & Stratton do? They decide to throw their hat into the hybrid ring with a concept car powered by a lawnmower engine. It's like if your neighbor's riding lawnmower suddenly started taking you to work, only, instead of cutting grass, it's cutting emissions. But before we dive deeper into this Frankenstein of a vehicle, Let's get one thing straight. Now let's talk about the specifications of this early hybrid. The Briggs & Stratton hybrid was powered by a 700 cubic centimeter engine that churned out 13.4 kilowatts, 18 horsepower of power, and was paired with a 6 kilowatt, 8 horsepower electric motor. If you enjoy stories about cars that make you question human ingenuity, you've come to the right place. So hit that subscribe button if you want to go down a rabbit hole of weird car history. And in case you're wondering, the peak combined power output was a whopping 20 horsepower. That's right, folks. This thing had roughly the same power as two high-end riding lawnmowers duct taped together. Power was transferred through a four-speed manual transmission positioned behind the front axle, while the electric motor was wedged between the transmission and the gasoline engine. This meant you could drive using the gasoline engine, the electric motor, or both. A multi-mode propulsion system! Take that, modern hybrids! The hybrid's battery pack was made up of 12 by 6 volt batteries located under the rear cargo area and to power the headlights and accessories, it had a separate 12-volt battery. Still, the fact that this was all crammed into a 4,420mm long, 1,451kg vehicle is actually pretty impressive given the time. But here's the real kicker. That six-wheeled layout wasn't just for show. The rear end had four wheels because the sheer weight of those batteries would have flattened a standard two-wheel setup. The center wheels did the driving, the front ones handled the steering, and the rear ones, well, they were just there for moral support. The car's design was a cobbled-together masterpiece, borrowing parts from different cars. The chassis? That came from the Canadian Marathon C360 electric van. The front suspension and four-speed manual transmission, courtesy of the Ford Pinto. You know, the one that was infamous for blowing up? And the bodywork? Fiberglass, made by the same guy who designed the Oscar Mayer Wienermobile. About the other cars that became donors for the Briggs & Stratton hybrid hand, I hope we'll learn from the experts in the comments. Now, this hybrid wasn't exactly a speed demon. The top speed was a reported 88 kilometers per hour, and it took a sluggish 35 seconds to go from zero to 80 kilometers per hour. In electric-only mode, you could only hit 64 kilometers per hour, and the car would run out of juice after about 100 kilometers. Charging it took eight hours on a household 110-volt outlet. Yes, you heard that right. If you needed to get to the store, better start charging the night before. One thing I do have to give credit for is the fact that the car used regenerative brake helped improve the hybrid's fuel efficiency and range. However, even with that little bit of technology, you still needed to plug it in periodically. And let's not forget, there was no computer control module. So the driver had to manually choose when to switch between the gasoline and electric modes. In terms of fuel consumption, Motor Trend reported that the Briggs & Stratton Hybrid got 4.7 liters per 100 kilometers when running on petrol alone. But when it ran as a hybrid, a more impressive 2.8 liters per 100 kilometers. Not bad for something built 40 years ago. The fact that it outperformed some modern hybrids in fuel efficiency, even with such primitive technology, is a testament to how far we've come. As for my final thoughts, the Briggs & Stratton Hybrid was a fascinating experiment in the early days of green cars. Sure, it wasn't fast, wasn't practical, and it definitely wasn't as convenient as modern hybrids, but it laid the groundwork for the vehicles we see today. 
And hey, if you want to support the channel, become a sponsor for just one United States dollar. That's right, one United States dollar. Less than the cost of a used Briggs & Stratton spark plug. Sponsorship link in the description. See you in the next video.